Hello. This is world famous supervillain Anonymous, leader of the terrorist organization Antifa. I'm coming to you today because I have hacked the We Don't Have a Podcast feed. We think that Nathan and AJ are too powerful to have keeping all of these great podcasts for themselves. So, we've stolen another one of their premium episodes, and we're releasing it for free, the way it should be. So, enjoy this podcast for free. And to hell with Nathan and AJ. A discouraging word And, and the, the skies, skies provide SoundCloud all day Well, hello there Welcome once again to The Ghost Horse Whisperer The Ghost Horse Whisperer is the only ASMR inspirational Advertisational Subliminal Sleep Time Podcast and inspirational once again, two times. Yeah, there's double the inspiration here, folks. So why don't we just get into it? What do you say? I'm, Are you I'm, I'm inspired all with that. I, I, I'm always inspired by ghosts, horses, positivity, and uh, business. It's not personal. It's business. That's what uh, the. <laughs> The last uh, so ranch we, owner told me when he told me he didn't need me to lead that that hundred head into the Yucatan for him, he, he <laughs> told told me it was just business and that I was spending way too much of my time talking to the horses and not enough of the time riding on the horses doing much of anything. Now, I understand what you're saying, and but I. I'm a little confused here. Uh, I'm, are we doing a relaxing voice or a cowboy voice? Uh, for me, they they's one and the same. Fair enough. Well, why don't you rest that sleepy cowpoke head, roll up that old saddle blanket, and just peel off those old boots. We got a, a can of beans over the fire. We have. Imagine a world with unlimited beans. <sighs> One's mind swims in the the gravy rivers of of excess. That's too many beans, friend. There's no such thing as too many beans. If Picture one. Picture yourself. In a river of beans. They're all available to you. You deserve these beans. You're thinking about those beans. I'm a fish with bean gills. (sighs) Alright, I I think I'm there. I think I'm ready to talk. Talk to the beyond. That's right. This is also a seance. We're not just going to inspire you but we're going to call forth spirits from the other side who have crossed over with their own inspirational messages for you. One thing a lot of folks don't know about a horse is a horse can't talk, but a horse ghost can. So Uh it's always helpful to go back and talk to the ghost of the horse that you done wrong and find out where you done wrong that's true Uh, excuse me for a moment I'm gonna go light some Yankee candles just try and get a 
get the horse sent out of here. Good, get a good mood going for to to relax. If you if you out there at home have a Yankee candle, light it too. Draw a bubble bath. On three. Sprinkle some. <laughs> One. Two. Two. Three. Three. All right, now that you have your Yankee candle lit. Just lie back. Focus on each part of your body. Every muscle. Just stretch them out. Feel them relax. Let your frustrations flow away from you and down that drain. Start. And start thinking about all of the rights you've done. All and all the wrongs down down the pipe. They're all going down the drain. All of the rights and wrongs you've ever done. Stop being so tense. The horse ghosts won't come around if you're all antsy. They can sense it on you. You have to be calm. You have to be cool. And you are calm. And you are cool. Those because kids... you use speed stick deodorant. Those kids at the mall respect you. <laughs> I have something to share with you. This is a horse that we brought into the studio. Now this this fellow right here, his name is Caliban. And he doesn't look like all the other horses, but it doesn't affect him none. It's okay. That's right. And it shouldn't affect you either. Hey, Caliban, do you like pretzel crisps? Oh, boy. It sure is a joy seeing Caliban's uh, face light up like that. As ghoulish as it is, uh, it does my heart a favor. Whoa there, boy. That's enough crisps. Now, Caliban here uh, has spent a lot of time perfecting uh, a specific form of horse dance that's not known to many humans but it's uh, called the, the horse to see and uh, a lot lot of, lot of human beings know about the two step but a, but a horse has four legs so it, it's really more of a four step dance <laughs> oh what what a pirouette yeah I, I just love seeing seeing that horse move around but good god is it ugly <laughs> I'd like to say that I don't think that what it, what Caliban is doing is ugly at all. It's beautiful and it's natural. Oh, I was just strictly talking about his horse face, the the face of Caliban. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, it's unfortunate, but he's one of my many horses, and I love him just as much as all the others, even Buttercup. But this is not a show about talking to the horses that we have here. No. It's a show about talking to the horses. In here. Yeah. And I'm Which, pointing uh, to my heart. Yeah, he's pointing inside, inside of his heart. Inside my heart. The horses that live in there. Not in the thick fibrous skin that uh, surrounds the juicy middle of, of your heart, <laughs> but the ones that are truly inside that juicy mill. If, if this were a gusher, this would be the liquid w liquid portion of the snack. No, I think... Well, no, slow down. Stop eating those pretzels. <laughs> you, you cannot... Once Caliban gets started, he cannot stop. Caliban cannot eat just one. Now, 
This isn't just about the horses. It's also about the horse ghosts. The ghosts of horses. And horses. What's the first horse you killed? I gotta be honest. I haven't killed a horse yet. Well, the fir first horse I killed, it was just due to inattention. <laughs> I didn't say whoa soon enough. <laughs> I forget that the trust was implicit between me and long hair Trigger. <laughs> Rest in peace. And I was like, Keep on backing up. Keep on backing up. You're good. You're good. And then, then he fell off that loading dock. <laughs> I was never the same. <laughs> so, wait, are you, are you saying <laughs> you backed a horse up slowly <laughs> off of a loading dock? Yeah, then uh, some... Some fella showed me a picture of some boobs at the critical moment, and I, I went, Auga! And, uh. That was all she wrote for her old long hair trigger. May he rest in peace. <clears throat> you hate to see it, folks. But I, I was maybe hoping to talk to him just to rest his ghost horse mind at ease that. I'd take him and his ilk a lot more seriously than I did back then. All right, let's let's all join hands. If you're out there listening with a loved one, join hands with them. We're going to call on the on the soul of Long Hair Trigger, the horse that AJ slowly backed up to a loading dock, <laughs> and, then, and then he saw a picture of boobs. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little emotional about this. Try to relax. As, as, as a precaution, remember to maintain the integrity of your salt circle. That's right. Because we the, the, the ghosts of horses we're, we're calling on are good, sweet beasts, but there are hill stallions out there, and, and you never know who's going to come through that ring. You don't want Bojack Horseman showing up. It's all of his bad vibes. He is the <clears throat> Mark Marin of horses. It's it's the worst. So everyone, please join hands. Join hands with your loved ones at or home. Hooves. Join hooves, and we call on you. If you're out there, long-haired trigger. Gone too soon. A true prince among horses. If you're out there, long-haired trigger. Speak. Make yourself heard, long-haired trigger. Wow, he's 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 really he's hanging get, us out in the wind. Yeah, he's giving I'm us the silent to, treatment. Starting to feel glad that I backed him up off that bloating bay dog. That's not true. I don't mean it, long-haired <laughs> trigger. I just. <sighs> I just know that you wanted to have it your way, and I, I never would take you to the Burger King restaurant that your heart wanted. And I'd uh, like, I'd like to also say, I'd like to say that um, if you weren't aware, just. Open your mind and relax right now. Because I need to tell you about Urban Daddy. Urban Daddy takes its content and its readers very seriously. This means we spend a lot of time and effort finding things we think you'd like to know about. This also means that we'd be crazy to take money or anything like that in exchange for featuring something in our daily emails. You can't buy editorial love from the daddy. That being said, I'm sorry, I think uh, my Domino's pizza has arrived. I heard a doorbell. And so we're, we're going to have to uh, interrupt this commercial break to go to uh, 
another commercial break uh, while we uh, while we enjoy some Domino's pizza. It sure would be divine to have a slice of my hand right now. So let's let's throw it to that commercial. All right, roll commercial. Tony Melito here from Budget Car Sales. My lot is crawling with Pokemon. They're everywhere, which means right now at Budget Car Sales, you can catch Pokemon and a deal on a nicer, newer car. For a limited time, you can drive for just $5 down. That's right, the price of 100 Pokeballs. You can level up in a nicer, newer car and hit Pokestops all over Kentuckyana. Ooh, ooh, I just caught Pikachu. Are you doing battle with past credit problems? My Florida People credit approval process is better than candy. We hit the gym with banks and lenders to supercharge approvals. So if you're ride is past reviving, dump it and say go, go, go in a nicer newer car. You could be on a hunt in the car of your dreams today for only $5 down. But hurry, this deal's only good for the first 88 trainers who level up in a nicer newer car. I'm Tony Molino, the dealer for the people. Woo! And we're back. We sure are. Now to give you a little peek behind the curtain, we actually took a break. We enjoyed we enjoyed that pizza. Full to gorging over here. Just, we shared it with the horse? When you're fighting with a horse for a slice of pizza, you eat fast and you fill up fast. It's true. You know what else is true? What's that? The Bible. Indeed, it's, it's one of the finer for horse books out there. There's quite a bit of, uh, horses in there. Some of them horses could fly, too. And bring pestilence with them. I was gonna correct you and say that I didn't think there were any flying horses, but you're right, there are those flying horses. It gets a little trippy. Uh, I'm not sure if they're... Are they flying as such, or... Just appearing in the, in the sky? Perhaps just their association with dragons uh, leads one to believe that they might might fly I I honestly it never mentions them having wings it's more like a floating horse they're flying in the in the same fashion as Superman would fly as much as I love that there Bible I always felt like they that that last book there was setting us up for a sequel that was gonna blow everything out of the water and I'm still waiting the, well it came out it was called the Book of Mormon <laughs> Yeah, different author, you know. I, I just wish the original guy had finished it up on his own. I, I wish that they'd Bringing got, Brandon Sanderson in to wish, finish the job is never ideal. I'd like I'd like to see Joe Dante at the helm of a Bible sequel. Yeah. Take it in a Gremlins 2 direction. It's like a... It's like a, a new batch of disciples. It's like a, there's like a genius disciple with a British accent and like a sexy disciple with big red lips. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm partial to uh, electric <laughs> disciple. You just plug whatever you want in there and you're good to go. You can listen to the uh, tunes you'd like to hear while you're on the trail with your horses. Picture yourself floating through pillowy clouds it's sun it's sun up the clouds are orange and pink like sherbet cool mist against your face the horse is flying and you're riding but he's flying like superman not like a winged horse like with his hooves uh extended two, in front two, of him two front hooves out never see a horse like that they fall straight on their face two rear hooves not this horse. And who's that? You feel arms around your waist. Why, it's that lady gremlin. She's along for the ride. Well, I wouldn't kick her out of my bunk, that's for sure. I, I wouldn't. Fancy <laughs> lady gremlin like that. She's a high-born lady of society gremlin. I like the way she winks. It's a new take on the sexy lady gremlin. She's... She's not some trashy ah. sex object. So are you, are you saying she's dressed in a more Victorian fashion? In all finest fineries. A hundred petticoats. She's riding side saddle on the back of your flying but not winged horse. So th 
this is like a, a Charlotte Bronte presents Gremlins 2 sort of situation. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what this is. All right, I can go to that place. I don't know if I want to come back. The horse flies higher and higher and higher still. You're entering the upper stratosphere of the atmosphere. If that... Are, I think those are... I think I said that right. There are a lot of them. Who can keep them all straight? There's an ionosphere up there too, I believe. A magnetosphere. There's a troposphere. You're gonna stay in inside the magnetosphere. Uh, lest you and the Lady Kremlin be bombarded by solar radiation. Is it getting a little nippy up here? It is. Yeah, I got my horse blanket with me. You have a beautiful horse blanket. All right, then. That's all I need. You wrap it around yourself. It's the softest, warmest horse blanket. It feels like it's made out of the very clouds themselves. And what's that below? It's the Taj Mahal. Hello down there, India. You've never seen such a such an incredible sight. And there, to your left, the Great Wall of China. Hello down there, China. Everyone in China waves and says hello to you. I think it's... Ni hao? Is that what they say? I can't understand a word. Well, there there you go. Don't ask a cowboy what, how to say Chinese words. Now you and the Lady Gremlin... The, the horse begins to travel faster. And faster... Going a little fast there, long hair trigger. I, I, I guess you know what you're doing. Long haired trigger is speaking to you from beyond. He says, "It's okay. I know you didn't mean to back me off of the loading dock. Y you know that's true. I regret it every day. You." You saw those hooters and you couldn't help yourself. My, my eyes popped out of my head, but they should have been squarely on you and not on those boobs. I forgive you. Well, that's fine to hear. I was thinking of uh, Ooga too. People don't know this, but horses find, find human women attractive. <laughs> I guess I should have known that, judging by Ma's uh, romance novel collection. It seems like a lot, a lot of those women folk get frisky with the horses. That's a little weird. Don't know that I like that. Don't care much for it myself. As far as you know. I, I forgive you for for backing me up. Uh, don't don't uh don't assume I forgive you for the thing about the. The novels. Oh, that's all right, Long Hair Trigger. I'd never ask for forgiveness for that. That's an unforgivable sin. But the bloody, smashed bone pile that I left you in on the bottom of that docking bay. I'm glad to have that off my conscience. Yeah. Well, ew, whoa, I got really fucked up for just falling off of a three foot loading dock. How'd that happen? I guess I didn't feed you enough, you know, those bones sure did splinter and gnash against your leathery horse skin, ripping it asunder and such. It's not all your fault. I, I, was, uh, I was one of the horses that had to help clean up Chernobyl, so my bones were real brittle and bad. Now you rest easy, long hair trigger. I don't want to put... Any of that Chernobyl shit on you, I thought you were past that. Uh, bringing up, waking up sleeping dogs and whatnot. Well, I thought it was kind of mean how you gave me the nickname Long Hair Trigger. 
considering that I'm completely hairless from radiation poisoning, but well, I, I, I know I, it's I, like when you call a fat guy curly. It's ironic. Horses understand irony. You you know I wasn't going for that. I, I was I was trying to talk about the long horse hair of the mind, trying to set you into a place where you could be the horse you were going to be before you ate all that nuclear fallout and whatnot. Can't uh, have a Geiger counter around you without the click, click, click drive me the fuck crazy. To be clear, I didn't eat it. It just soaks into your body if you're around it. Well, then I also apologize for beating you so much for eating something that you wasn't eating. It's all right. I... Well, to be honest, I did eat some of it. <laughs> just later. Well, that's my fault, too. I, I reckon that if I was getting punished for something I hadn't done, I'd probably go ahead and do it anyway. It just makes sense. Balance that uh, equation of punishment out. That's true. Yeah, I, uh, I'm up in heaven, and I got, got. Uh, they, they said that in the book, in the big book that they look at when you get to heaven to see your all your good deeds. They said that I was jerking off, and I wasn't. I believe but I you. am now. Now, will you set my mind at ease, long hair trigger? Now, up up there in that that good place, uh. Is, is it an all horses go to heaven situation? No. No. No, only select few. And they let you in even though you're a chronic masturbator? No, they, I was just, they said that I had a brief dalliance. That I'd sinned in my heart. Oh, so you never spilled your, your <coughs> steed seed upon the ground? No. Well, then that checks. Yeah, they'll throw you out for uh, oh, for onanism. <laughs> well, I guess this is goodbye then, long hair trigger. Is there anyone in heaven that you'd like to talk to? Uh, maybe. Oh, boy. Who all's up there? I, I don't know who made the cut. Oh, we got a, uh, um... Martin Landau... I do love that that fine film, Little Big League, that he appeared in. Uh, I, let's put him in the good pile, but see if we can't do better. Nothing against Martin Landau. <laughs> fine, fine film actor. I really did believe that he owned the Minnesota Twins. Uh, also, we got a uh, Ty Cobb is here. <laughs> now once again uh, it, I, I feel it, that doesn't, doesn't seem quite right you tell me that there are horses that don't make the cut but they let that scum sucking son of a gun up there F funny story he never uh, he never jerked off once in his life and God was so impressed and let him in. Yeah, I, mean, I, I thought God was taking like a broader view of things, but it seems like there he's a little bit one note in how he is making making his cuts and calls here. Yeah, he's kind of obsessed with the, the whole masturbation thing. I'd, I'd say you 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 dodged a bullet to the horse head when uh, God didn't give you any hands, long hair trigger. Yeah. Well, in heaven I do have hands. Where they come out of? They... <laughs> they come out of your horse chest? That... They coming out the flanks? They're coming out... They're, yeah, they're... It's like two little hands, like the alien... Like the alien queen. And so I just... They're in the middle between my legs. Oh, so it's an easy access yeah, situation. Little... I, I was trying to picture how you were contorting your body to get at that hog. But... Sometimes I'll do what I call a run and tug, where I just run through these beautiful Elysian fields, just whacking it. Well, 
Oh, it's glorious. Long hair, I gotta tell you. You gotta put in a good word with the big man. Because, truth be told, I've already excluded myself. And if, if there's anything I can do to get back into his graces, that sounds like just about the best the best that could be. Every, oh, yeah. every, every representation I've ever seen of that place is much more about, like, harp music, which ain't really my thing. I'm a guitar man. And, you know... <laughs> Not a whole lot of horses run around jacking each other off, and uh, I'm sorry if, if if his PR team down here on Earth had gotten the word out a little bit better. I might have been a little bit better myself. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like spring break '98 up here. See, uh, once you get to heaven, God isn't in charge. I mean, he's like a middle management guy, but everybody up here. Has to answer to Super God. Well, this guy already sounds like he's uh, pretty cool, judging by you describing your day to day activities. I think that I'd like the cut of this Super God's jib. He's just, he's like an extra dimensional being in charge of, he's the God for heaven. And uh, yeah, he doesn't understand. He's pretty much like an out of touch RA. Oh. Just kind of, you can get away with stuff because he doesn't even know what pot smells like. Oh, long, long ago, I, I had me one of them gutter punk RAs. And, you know, I'd, I'd just burn him uh, Miles Davis CDs and he'd leave me the fuck alone. That's, yeah. that's a true story. That's wild. <laughs> that's wild. I didn't know gutter punks were so fond of... They're fond of pretending just like anybody else. <laughs> Cough it up. Yeah, wow. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. Sparkling in the in the misty misty dawn. I'm seeing stars swirling about. That's a true story too. Well, I gotta say, I was a little bit trepidatious when when I entered into talking to the horse that I my negligence killed but I can tell that I'm going to be taking a new path in life mm. no more of the well I'm not going to give it a name but you know the naughty the naughty thing that I did that's going to make the make the jerk god mad just so I can get to hang out with the cool god that lets me do it well it's, there is one notorious masturbator who made it into heaven. And who's that? It's, it's Chris Kyle, the American Sniper. <laughs> well, I. So there's, there's your goalpost. <laughs> I don't know if military is going to take someone my age. I might have to take this new new, new track and yeah. in my own hands here. Yeah, you can get pretty loosey-goosey with it if you're good enough. Uh, yeah, God, uh, two things he's obsessed with is uh, masturbating and then uh, some sort of insane holy war. So, uh... Yeah, just get those confirmed kills up. Get those numbers up. Uh, you can get right in here. Now, quick question. Is this a one-to-one -one sort of balancing of the books? Or, you know, will he uh, take take it upon, you know, if I start to do one thing I very much don't want to do and stop doing one thing that I have scarcely gone a day without doing since I was just a pup, uh... It just it seems like the trials and tribulations are, are about to pile up for me. But I guess it's worth it. Hang, hang on, I'll I ask. I guess it's worth it. I'll ask him, okay? Yeah. It's, it's going to be a lot of, a lot of headshots. I you should probably just cut to commercial again. All right.
right. It, it, while I go ask Chris Kyle, the American sniper, about how to get into heaven if you jerked off. Message from heaven from Chris Kyle, the American sniper. Chris, I, I really am excited to pick your brain on how I'm going to go about doing this because I, I, I want to be the new you. He, wait, you want me to tell him that? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with you being a spirit medium, long hair trigger. I understand that I. I find your face comforting but his angel face might be strange and weird i'm not sure what dimensional wavelength this is coming to me on and whatnot so fer ferry these messages to and fro between me and so okay. so so All ask right. him how i can follow in in his uh in his wonderful footsteps and what? end up uh, a saved saved uh, heaven man too okay all right well you should probably need to throw the commercial again while I go tell him what you said. All right, uh, we'll be right back after this message. Making a commercial for like a water park in the 90s and then Mazda bought it. <laughs> so I guess this is just the song, not an actual commercial. There's something like PBS afternoon cartoon about this song, too. I'm yeah. Think of what it is. It's, yeah. Like, it's like the, uh, the Arthur theme song, which was inexplicably reggae. Yeah. Was it just the Curious George movie that Jack Johnson did the yeah. music for? Okay. That's a long one, huh? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to put something else in there in its place. <laughs> or just leave it. <laughs> Fuck you. You already paid $5 to listen to this. <laughs> and we're back. I don't know why I'm the one saying it. I'm channeling the ghost of a dead horse. Well, uh, it's, it's real good having you back here, Long Hair Trigger. And I do want to hear the news that you've brought back to me from the American Sniper. But I just got to say, before we even do that, it's just glad, I'm just glad to have you back. I just wish I was feeding, you know, you one bean, then me one bean, then you one bean, then me one bean, then you one bean, and me one bean, on and back and forth, all you know, all until we it's time to go to bed again. I, I miss those days. But go ahead and make with the news. I, I got to get into heaven. All right, uh, he says that, uh, he says, first of all, thank you for your support, and, uh, 
He said fifteen dollars for autographs. If that was something you were interested in. I, I I am. I'm just worried about your your means of conveyance of that fifteen dollars to him. Can can it be a payment upon my punching my ticket to heaven? Yeah, it could. You could wait. However, <clears throat> I, I would like to have you him can't. Him. You can't. You can't. Uh, bring any of your earthly treasures up here. So you gotta, you gotta start over once you get here. Oh, well. You'd have to earn 15 heaven, could, heaven bucks. He, oh, he wants to be paid in heaven bucks. Yeah, it's all, all right. it's all uh, the company store up here. Uh, you gotta work in the heaven distribution center. They, well, I, we already know that there are horses in heaven, so I'm pretty sure I can pick up some work some, some here or where. Yeah, yeah. This now th- these horses also have uh, pelvic hands now, uh, so they might be able to do some of the work for themselves that that I I used to provide the services for. Now so wait to speak. a minute, what is this, what is this service you're providing? Release, <laughs> full release. <laughs> you don't want an antsy horse. You don't want a scared <laughs> horse. You want a very calm horse that ain't gonna freak out. And that's you, right. You know, and and that sort of feeling, if you got a bunch of horses together, is contagious. So you gotta make sure that they're they're all very docile. Yeah. It's weird to say this at this point, but this just took a weird turn. <laughs> I mean, that's just one small part of my job description. There's a lot of stuff that those little hands, I'm sure, can't get to. For example. What is a horse good for? Carrying something on its back. You, I mean, not to question God and his infinite wisdom, but you put some hands down there and don't put some on its back. How's he going to lift How's he going to lift a burden upon his back? Yeah, that's true. So However, I, I'm still I will valuable say, in some sense. This, it's pretty useful having the extra little arms in the middle. I can carry two suitcases. Kind of, if you picture it. <laughs> be, be a little... I'm running... You got a you got a lot you got a pack loaded up, but then down below, just two nice uh, Samsonite. The only only issue I see with that is once you you've uh, taken uh, <laughs> your charges uh, luggage to their room and you reach out for your tip, I think people might be a little uncomfortable going down under <laughs> under there to hand you your tip. And in which case, I could be a tip attendant for you, so as not to. You know, leave that as the the last image in, in their mind when uh, they're trying to get on with their heaven vacation. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm I'm very employable, and I will do just about anything. Yeah, that works. Um, yeah, we have to pool tips here, so we'll, you'll have to split it not not just with me, but also with the dishwashers. I feel like that's very and fair because I mean the line chefs. I'm a I'm I'm a conscious being just offering to do the job that a, a little fanny pack could do, uh, so I, I can't get too high and mighty about it. Cool, 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 cool. Anyway, uh, so he, here's what John Cena said. John Cena. <laughs> John Cena passed away. Goodness gracious, you didn't even prepare me. <laughs> Obviously, he's up there. Why, why, are we t- why are we talking to the American Sniper? <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got confused. I went and talked to John Cena because I was thinking that he was the American Sniper. Well, now I'm the $15 of... for an autograph thing makes a little more sense. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's been a very confusing day. John Cena just got here. Uh, everybody's crowding around him, and for some reason I thought he was the American sniper. Well, they are both big stars, and uh, I believe John John Cena was the star of the film The Marine. That's probably what I was... That's what got it in my head. Which, you know, pl- plenty of headshots, so, you know, they's one and the same, as far as I'm concerned. Well, uh, he said he said that it was a one to one. Oh, 
okay. that he only ever he only ever masturbated in celebration of a confirmed kill. Now, to my knowledge, John Cena only handed out attitude adjustments and not headshots. In which case, uh, I, I think I might be able. To, it's going to be a few thousand attitude adjustments I got to give out, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm much happier than I was 15 minutes ago. Oh, good. Good. Now, uh... Yeah, I don't know what he meant by a confirmed kill. Unless he, unless he was secretly... You know, like SEAL Team 6 or something like that. that. That's quite possible, now that I think about it. I could go back and ask him, but, uh... I don't know, I'm I'm worried, now. I'm worried. I made... I made presumptions. I know. Well, you're going to go back him... and say, like, I called him a liar and that he's not the, the, the American sniper and that he's just a wrestling man and I, I, I feel like I'm I need to tread a lot more lightly. I mean, this is a new realm and I've got an end there and I don't want to I don't want to mess it up right now. Yeah, all right. I, yeah, I know I'm embarrassed because I was calling him Mr. American Sniper. Uh, and I was, and yeah. I was asking him about that that baby scene in the movie, how he felt about that with the little rubber baby. That it was clearly just a fake baby, and it was like the, it's supposed to be the emotional climax of the film. He was, yeah, he had no idea what I was talking about. I went on and on about that rubber baby. Man, it's a real shame he never got to see the movie. They made about him, but I guess if he could have, there wouldn't have been as much movie. That's right. It would have, it would have stopped about 30 minutes, 40, 45 minutes before it did. People would have, it would have been a competing for the best short film. You, it, or it could have just caught up to present day, and then it's like he's just looking like... Uh, now he owns a Dairy Queen. See, he suddenly sees himself sitting in a theater... <laughs> He's and like, holy it, shit. And then it goes all synecdoche New York with the American sniper. It's like when you're standing in front of a camera that's pointed at the TV showing the camera and you're like, look at my hand. It's making like a crazy pattern. Yeah. Do you remember that? When they used to sell camcorders at Sears? Uh-huh. I, my, my eyes always went straight to the Super Nintendo uh, stand that they had, but I, I do remember waiting for that and being like, oh, look what look what a young cowpoke I am. <laughs> I got a lot of growing up to do. I, I, I remember as a young horse being mad when they took Street Fighter out to showcase the Aladdin video game. <laughs> no, for me, it was Ken Griffey Jr.'s win and run. Nobody wanted that. No one wanted Ken Griffey Jr., that's why he's not up here. I'm just learning so much. Like I said, it's been a busy day. Is uh, is the apocalypse happening outside as we speak? As we, we, you know, I feel a little fat and happy with my pizza, but now I'm starting to worry that I've got to get a lot of headshots in a short amount of time. Well, yeah, no, it was just a bus. It had Ken Griffey Jr., John Cena, Meryl Streep. Oh no. Um, JFK Jr. That's uh, right. He did fake his death, but then he was on the bus. <laughs> so many questions. He was. He really was behind QAnon. And he was. He was trying to help President Trump round up the vast network of of pedophiles and they had them all on the bus <laughs> and then and then the the deep state blew up the bus killed him JFK Jr. in that disguise what a sacrifice I and just wish that he hadn't had to take Meryl Streep and King Griffey Jr. with them but you know all those secret pedophiles <laughs> now now we as as a nation have to salute you, little man. 
as you have done more for us than we've ever done for your family. Really and truly. It's an exciting day. Also, <laughs> pretty wild. All the pedophiles showed up. <laughs> did he just put out signs that, yeah, like, well, 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 how'd he get them all in one place? <laughs> he had a big big cardboard box you know with a stick with a string tied to it kind of propped up uh-huh. and then there was just a he, he took an old a, an old can like a soup can but he peeled the label off and then he wrote on the can just said stuff pedophiles like that'll do it that, they fell for it they were all crowding around trying to open the can. I believe it. When, once that label wears off that can, you have no idea what you're getting. I mean, I try to make it a, a, a habit of only buying cans of beans, but I've been surprised by a lima bean or two. Yeah, they get you know, in there. Which is also a bean, but it's the bean I don't like. You know, I, try, I when I say beans, I mean a certain kind of beans, and it's not li- lima beans. Right, it's the, it's the baked beans, right? Those are good. Well, you got another kind of kidney bean? beans. They're good for your, like if, if if you're having a lot of kidney pain. Great northern beans. If you're, you know, up north, you gotta eat some northern beans, butter beans, jelly beans. Is there any? Is there anything else that uh? You wanted to ask any of the dead people up here in heaven? Uh, you know, uh, you guys got hats up there or do I need to bring my own? Oh, you told me I couldn't. Ugh. You guys got hats up there? Yeah, is there a specific kind? Uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, I got a 10-gallon down here, so, uh, got anything a little bit bigger than that? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go check... All right. At the Heaven Mall. That's pretty important to me, uh, is uh, how much liquid can I keep in my hat, because it's also my bowl. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go, uh, I'll go check it out, and I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Anyway, you, you should just, uh, throw the commercial again. Super Godspeed. <coughs> we'll be back in a minute. But pouring water on ordinary dog food won't make gravy. Gaines Gravy Train makes the gravy your dog is craving. Ordinary dry gets watered down. Gravy Train dog food makes thick, delicious real beef gravy. No, ordinary dry won't make gravy. No matter how hard you try. Gravy Train makes the gravy your dog is craving. Hello, hello. Hi there. Yeah. Uh, what did you find out about them hats? So we got a, uh, <clears throat> we got one one place that sells hats up here. It's a lids. Oh, horseshit! <laughs> you tell me, closest thing I'm getting to a twelve gallon hat, which is the news I was hoping you'd return to me with, is a. Uh, New Era baseball cap? Yeah. Possibly a Texas Rangers, I'm guessing. It's probably the, the best I'm going to do. Yeah, all the, all the brims are flat. Well, I can bend them, right? Or in heaven, do they <laughs> flatten back out? Yeah, there's no there's no disease in heaven, so hat brims flatten themselves back out as soon as you try and try and curve them. We do have one that's camouflage, digital camo, and it says Supreme on it. I don't know if that's the sort of thing the cowboys are into or not. Are any of them bedazzled with some turquoise? Any Anything you can do to help me out here? We have a Charlotte Hornets one. That, that might just have to do. Purple and turquoise. 
<sighs> it's pretty wild as an NBA team. I'm, I'm starting to worry that I'm talking to a hill beast now and that this is some sort of flip them up, trick them up right now. <laughs> <If there's... laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I wish there were... I wish there was some way to know for sure. It... Well, hang on. Let me see if there's, uh... If there's anyone I know... Uh, that I, you know... From your life... Up here that you could speak to. <sighs> I guess I'll talk to some of them. Some of them jerks. Alright, do, do you have a request? Oh, uh, I don't know, uh, my daddy, I guess. All right, hang on, I'll go see if I can find him. Just, just go to another commercial. <laughs> Jones Barbecue Foot Massage! Jones Barbecue Foot Massage! Better come down here, get some of this shit. You like to eat? America loves to eat. So why not open up somewhere America can sit down, enjoy a meal, and get their feet rubbed? We'll fry anything you want for $5.99. As long as it's friable or edible, we're going to make it deliciousable. We will fry parts of the chicken you didn't even know was friable. The beak, the feathers, we'll fry candy bars. All that European stuff that you don't really normally eat, we'll bring it down here and fry it for you. Ask McDonald's to fry something other than what they normally fry. Guess what you're going to get? Nothing. If it fit through the dough, I'll put it in the fryer. Hell, this is a dinosaur. All our meats are gently tenderized to their optimum deliciousness. We got fine dinosaur meat. Took my money, made me pay child support. Come on down here and get you a slice. Once they get your social security number, it's over. Motivated, 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 motivated. So friends, let's just decide you don't want no barbecue. Well, that's fine too. Why not let one of my foot specialists or myself perform my magic? Look at that, don't they look wonderful? If you really pay me enough, we'll massage your feet in any of these sauces also. Success is the rule down here at Jones. Good ass barbecue and foot massage. So go ahead and give me a call or find us on the worldwide internet at the new website. That's J O N E S Big Ass Truck Rental and Storage.com backslash Jones. Good ass barbecue and foot massage.html. Excuse me, did you call number 52? Did you hear me call number 52? All right. I'm back. I'm here too. Would you, did you? Did you talk to my pappy? Well, no. He's not there. Yeah, yeah. apparently he was a chronic masturbator. <laughs> well, I could have told you that. I guess I should have picked somebody else. Uh, but the mind starts to uh, strain to think of someone who who was that chaste there throughout their existence uh maybe uh hang on hang on uh i'm sorry i gotta go where, where you gotta go long it's, trigger. it's uh it's we have a intramural intramural reverse polo reverse polo yeah that sounds uh interesting uh does that does that mean that you're gonna climb yourself upon a a man and whip him about a field while yeah. sm- smacking a, a ball with a mallet? Yeah. All right. I'm getting... It's good good talking to you, long-haired tricker. Thank you for talking to the American sniper for me. Uh, and I hope you ride him good uh, up there in that there polo match. I don't know if you're... If he's your human... Uh, I gotta tell you, I'm the American sniper. Yeah. No. Who's your human? The the guy who played Worf. Michael Dorn is dead. <laughs> Chimney. Yeah, he was. He wasn't on the bus, though. Don't worry. <sighs> it was just a coincidence. He's he's having a rough time up here. Everybody thinks he's one of the better. <laughs> Files. 
Are you telling me that some of them pedophiles weren't chronic masturbators and slipped through? Oh yeah, the whole bus of them. Oh. Son of a bitch. Yeah, it's weird loophole. They, none of them... None of them were into masturbating. All these deep state, high-profile high pedophiles. Every, every you know, I, I started out over the moon. I wasn't going to have to masturbate any horses anymore, and I, I, now it's just every every bit of news about heaven makes me feel like Super God missed a little left at the mark. Well, no, God's like the God's the boss of Earth, so uh, he's the one making the call on that. Super God don't, don't give a shit. Sounds like Super God ought to fire God's ass. <laughs> well, like I said, he's just kind of like a. You know, like, if you ever work at a Arby's, and your manager knows what's going on, but then, like, the franchise owner shows up, and you all just kind of have to be like, oh, just let him do it. He, he likes to come in here, and he'll yell at you, like, you need to hurry up, and, like, but then he's, like, burning the fries and, like, cross-contaminating all the horsey with the Arby. Yeah. Though, that does make the best sauce. It's kind of a mustard and A's sort of situation, but I, I make it myself at home. Oh, up here we still have uh, all the discontinued sauces oh. when they die on Earth. That's that's they wonderful to hear. here in heaven. I, I just always, uh, just to make sure, I show up with a gallon uh, Ziploc bag and fill her up, and uh, then I freeze it. And then I'll, like, knock myself off a little ice cube of sauce and... and warm it up. We got so much of that Szechuan up here. I never actually tasted that one. It's uh, it's actually a problem. There's there's a ton of it and the only people who want it are the Rick and Morty fans. Now you're telling None me of them are you're telling that. me that there's a single Rick and Morty fan that has died who has ne- never mastered That's what I'm saying. None of them are here. Okay. Well, that's fitting then. Yeah, chief of sinners. Those Rick and Morty fans. Anyway, yeah, I gotta go. I'm gonna be late. Well, toodaloo. Uh, Stephen thank Dorn you for is... revealing like a beautiful uh, tableau of horses flying and, and getting me all excited. And then I find out that the only hat stores are lids and that the place is crawling with pedophiles and I gotta let a horse ride on me. Just, just, I love you very much, long hair trigger. And you're good, and I very much value your forgiveness, but I, I think I might be shed of all this horse bullshit. And heaven bullshit. I think I'm going to have a piece of pizza. Okay. Well. It's like, I had it all, and then they ripped it away from me. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. Anyway, is this the end of your show? I think it is. Okay. I, I don't know if we're going to do another one of these, to be frank. Uh, when you're talking to the ghost of a horse, a lot of different things can happen. They might show you something that you've wanted to see and tell you something that you really wanted to hear, but they also might show you some unspeakable truths that are going to wreck the frickin' rest of your life. Oh, God. I'm too too disgusted to, to podcast anymore. Do you got anything else from, like, the uh, American Sniper? Maybe maybe some words of wisdom? I don't know. He got in there. I don't know if it's even... I wish I knew a hell horse. Yeah, uh... Yeah, nope. All right, let's, you know, just uh, hope you all know a hell horse. Talk to your hell horse ghosts. Heaven horse ghosts are fine, fine and dandy, but, you know, they're doing their thing, and that's not a place you want to go. It seems like it's made for the horses, not for the people. Mm-hmm. All right, good night, everyone. Sleep sleep well. I, I, I hope you turned this podcast off at the 45-minute mark, because... If you didn't, you're probably going to have some terrible 
Terrible nightmares. I said that like a horse. Yeah. The horse is like those kind of jokes. I got it. They, it, it's like when when you tell a story, you know, like you say somebody's name and their ears perk up. Mm. So when I do that for them, they they don't talk like you, and they pretend like they like it to probably make me feel better. All right, that's been our show. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for Conan. <laughs>